Hi YouTube, in this video we're going to talk about the derivatives and integrals of the hyperbolic functions. So first let's start with the derivative with respect to x of the hyperbolic sine of x, sinh x. So if you take this derivative, it's actually really simple. You just get the hyperbolic cosine of x. Totally worth memorizing. This would mean that if you integrate both sides of this equation, you'd be integrating cosine on the right-hand side. And when you integrate the left-hand side, the derivative goes away. So you just get hyperbolic sine. So when you integrate the hyperbolic cosine, you just get the hyperbolic sine plus some arbitrary constant. If we take the derivative of cosinh, or the hyperbolic cosine, in this case, we just get the hyperbolic sine, so sinh. This is different from regular trig functions, right? Like if you take the derivative of cosine, you would get negative sine, but this is much easier. There's no negative, so you just get sinh. Likewise, if you integrate both sides of this equation, you'd basically be integrating sinh. And when you integrate the left-hand side, the derivative goes away. And so the integral of sinh is cosinh. Really beautiful stuff. If you take the derivative of the hyperbolic tangent of x, you get the hyperbolic secant squared of x. Very similar to what you see uh, with trig functions, right? The derivative of tangent is secant squared. That means if you integrate the hyperbolic secant squared with respect to x, you end up with the hyperbolic tangent of x plus a constant. If you take the derivative with respect to x of, let's say, the hyperbolic cotangent of x, in this case, you get negative hyperbolic cosecant squared Right. Very, very similar to what you see with regular trig functions, right? The derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared. This means if you integrate the hyperbolic cosecant squared of x with respect to x, well, you can move the negative over to the left-hand side, and basically then you would be integrating this right-hand right -hand piece. So the derivative would cancel, so you would get negative hyperbolic cotangent x plus our constant c. C is our constant of integration. If you take the derivative with respect to x of, say, the hyperbolic secant of x, here's where it gets a little bit different from what you're used to. So the derivative of secant is secant tangent. But when it's hyperbolic, you have a negative here. So it's a hyperbolic secant hyperbolic tangent. Likewise, when you integrate the right-hand side, the integral of hyperbolic secant, hyperbolic tangent with respect to x is going to be equal to negative hyperbolic secant plus a constant. And last but not least, if you take the derivative with respect to x of, say, the hyperbolic cosecant of x, well, if it was just cosecant, you would get negative cosecant cotangent. So it's very similar here, except you have the hyperbolic ones. So hyperbolic cosecant, hyperbolic cotangent. So when you integrate the hyperbolic cosecant times the hyperbolic cotangent with respect to x, you get negative hyperbolic cosecant x plus an arbitrary constant. So let's go ahead and do just a few examples uh, of differentiating and integrating hyperbolic functions uh, using these formulas. So I'm going to scroll down a little bit and maybe change color here. Here we go. And let's find some derivatives. Let's say we had f of x equals the hyperbolic sine of 3x squared plus x. And if we wanted to take the derivative of this, well, we would use the chain rule, right? So the derivative of the hyperbolic sine is hyperbolic cosine. So it'd be cosinh of, you would leave the inside alone, 
then you would multiply by the derivative of the inside, right? You would use the chain rule. So the derivative of 3x squared plus x, well, that's going to be just, let's see, 2 times 3 is 6. So you get 6x, and the derivative of x is 1, so 6x plus 1. And that's it. I guess the only thing you could do to make it look a little bit better is you could put the 6x plus 1 in the front. So 6x plus 1, hyperbolic cosine of 3x squared plus x. And just for completeness, let's just do one integral in this problem. And in the videos that follow, you'll have more examples of these. Let's say you had to integrate um, the hyperbolic cosine of um, 3x with respect to x. In this case, you would make a u substitution, right? You would let your u be equal to 3x. And then du would be equal to 3dx. Now you're missing a 3 here, you just have the dx. So you would divide this by 3 here to make this match what's in your integrand. So du over 3 would be equal to dx. Now you would carefully make the substitution. So your dx is going to be du over 3. So we can pull out the 1 third. Then we have the integral sign. And b cosinch of u du. When we integrate cosinch, we just get cinch. So this would be 1 third cinch u. But u is 3x. So we can go ahead and replace that. And then we have plus c. And that would be the answer in this case. So I hope this video has been helpful. It's mainly intended as an introduction to the derivatives and integrals. In the videos that follow, you'll see many more examples of derivative, derivatives and integrals. That's it. Thanks for visiting.